today I'm just going to share with you a number of tips in terms of working from home. I've been doing this for about seven years now and it's one or two things I've picked up over that time. A little bit of structure and a bit of a system throughout the day really, really helps. So I'm going to get straight into it and I'll share the slides with you. So 17 tips from working from home. Number one, wake up early. So don't leave it to five minutes before you've got to make some kind of conference or Zoom call. Wake up early, give yourself a break to get ready. You know, have your breakfast, do some exercise and then get yourself dressed and get on the call. It's a bit tongue in cheek, but waking up five minutes early, I've witnessed a number of people who've come to the call, not uh, started the video player and or had some kind of reason not to have a visual of the call and sometimes I suspect is that you know they've got a bad hair day or bed head as we call it or they're simply not dressed and still in PJs so number two get dressed <laughs> don't stay in your PJs get dressed put something on that you would perhaps normally wear to the office of course it doesn't have to be uh, completely work etiquette but something that's comfortable but yet still not too uh, homey or casual, you know, something that's going to make you feel like you are working on uh, during the day. So number three, try to keep your bedroom place where you sleep and relax kind of sacred. Uh, if you work on the bed or slouching over on the bed, it does give you a different feel to what you should normally be doing in terms of work. So if you can find a space that's dedicated, that's better. But try and leave your bedroom space purely for relaxing, chilling and sleeping. We'll come on to why if you can find a dedicated workspace that would be far more ideal so number four pick a workplace that you can come to time and time again that is your dedicated workspace find a decent chair why because when you're at work you are at work and if you're able to get to a place in your apartment your flat your house that's dedicated for work then when you're in that position psychologically you're also at work which makes a big difference to your day number five yes ties in with get dressed and ready for work put some shoes on you know <laughs> i've seen a couple of competitions out there where people on video calls have been asked to show what they're wearing on their feet uh, it's all a bit tongue-in-cheek but a lot of people just wear slippers or socks for me personally i, I you know i wear my normal shoes not necessarily uh, hardcore work shoes but I wear normal shoes just to feel that you're actually doing something work related that day rather than wearing your slippers or socks which makes you feel like you're not really at work and let's face it I'm pretty sure you wouldn't go to work in your slippers number six communicate with your colleagues on a regular basis so if you can have a video call with your co-workers uh, you know more frequently than normal that's a great thing connect with them have a virtual coffee i've been having lots of virtual coffees lately it's a huge amount of fun you know not only with your colleagues but with clients with vendors with partners with associates whatever it might be it's a good idea and it really does uh, you know make your day not only go faster but it also makes your day more pleasant because you're connecting with people who are also in a similar situation and you're, you're, you're making each other more positive just by dialogue and con conversing. Number seven, I would definitely recommend this one, sign out of all your personal accounts. So, you know, your TikTok, your social media, Facebook, your Instagram accounts, all that kind of stuff. WhatsApp, why? Because every time there's a ping or a dong or some kind of sound that you know these devices make on your tablet and and or your phone it's a distraction and that's a whole nother topic but your distraction simply means that you're not focused on your work and it takes a lot more time to get refocused back on your work once you've been distracted and in some cases if you respond to a social media message of some description it could take you right down a rabbit hole which ultimately can waste half an hour or even an hour before you realize what's happened. Number eight, for me, when I first started working from home, it was very, very quiet. You know, I was so used to the humdrum of the office. You know, there's some background noise going on, people chatting, a printer going off, whatever it might be. So for me, putting some music on really helps me focus. Now it may not for you, and I, I know some people put the TV on or put the radio on in the background, 
nothing too heavy or a big thumping beat. It's just something that's quite mellow, just so there's some background noise which might help you. You can hear, you can probably hear now with this microphone that I've got, it's, it's a, it's a multi-directional mic, you can probably hear the birds in the background. So for me, that background noise works well and I may also have some music going on. Number nine. You can overwork from home. Yes, it's counterintuitive. People think I work from home, that's great. You know, I'll start on time, finish on time. But actually, uh, for me personally, especially in the early days, I used to overwork. You know, I used to get up at six or seven, be at my desk at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and before you know it, it's 10 at night. And I've had a few, you know, very few irregular breaks, uh, hardly any, you know, nutritious or good food. I'm just trying to get through the work. Why? Because you're at work all the time. Because there's no split between home and work. And there are one or two things you can do about that, which we'll come on to. So try and stick to your working hours. I tend to be eight in the morning till six in the evening. And that works for me uh, with lots and lots of breaks, but we'll come on to that in a second. So number 10, here we go. Take some frequent breaks. So for me, I work in about 50 minute chunks. So less than an hour. I work for about 50 minutes, maybe 45, but then I have a 10 or 15 minute break. Now that might sound like an awful lot of breaks during the day, but for me personally, I find it's extremely productive. I can get something done and underline it so it's done. And if it's not done, I know where I can stop and then have a break, move around, get, uh, get that blood flowing, get your eyes refocused into the long distance rather than at a screen. Uh, maybe grab a tea or a coffee, whatever you like. Definitely hydrate. I've always got a bottle of water here, which I can I can grab. And it, it just allows you to break the, the day up a little bit. Number 11, keep in regular contact with your team. So this is on a more formal basis. Uh, you know, if your team's got a 10 o'clock meeting every morning, then make sure you're there, make sure you're present so they can actually see they're at home and working. Why? Because it's peace of mind not only for you, but for your managers and the people that they report to in terms of line management. Uh, there is still a reporting structure that happens and that needs to be adhered to, especially when people are at work. I found in terms of the trust element, it, it works better when you're in more regular contact. However, you know, you don't want to overdo it and just be in contact for frivolous reasons. Have a structure, have a system, you know, there's going to be some kind of etiquette working in this two-dimensional world from your own company, some policy that's been, you know, emailed out to everybody. So stick to it so everybody is on the same page. Number 12, use headphones. So I've got these sound cancelling headphones and a microphone. For me, it works because I don't have any other interruptions from outside. I can't hear very much other than what I'm saying. And if you're on a Zoom call or a Microsoft uh, Teams call or a Google Hangouts call or Skype or whatever you and your organization is working on, if there's a team meeting and you're all deliberately not on mute, then the background noise can interfere. So if you've got something like earbuds or, or big headphones, that really does help. So be aware of that. So any background noise can interrupt other listeners on the call. But if you can minimize that, that's perfect. Number 13, have lunch. <laughs> and as I alluded to earlier, I sometimes skip lunch because I thought, oh, I'll get around to it later. I'll grab a bite later. And before you know it, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. You haven't had anything to eat. Your energy levels have dipped right down and you're wondering why you're not being so productive or your mind's wandering. It's because you haven't eaten. You haven't given your body any fuel. So have regular breaks, have a short, you know, sort of a light, nutritious lunch and drink lots of water. Hydrate, hydrate more than you think you need to. For 14, go outside. Now I like to do this particularly after lunch. So I will have had something light to eat, a salad or something quick, uh, but nutritious. Then I tend to go for a fairly long walk. So my, my lunch hour is about an hour and a half, an hour and a quarter, something like that. So I'll eat something for half an hour, then go for a uh, a walk for half an hour or 45 minutes, something like that. It just helps you refocus and recalibrate ready for the afternoon. And this really does help me. So it may not help you, but you will have something that helps you. I find physical exercise definitely helps me refocus 
keeps me on track, keeps me on la- on uh, aligned to what I need to do. And from a physical point of view, it helps the blood flow, it reoxygenates your lungs, it uh, refocuses your eyes because you're looking in the distance rather than at a screen all the time. And I genuinely think that will help. Number 15, don't be distracted. Earlier on, I spoke about these things, tablets, phones, pinging in the background and they become a distraction. Equally important, I found over the years, is don't be distracted by household chores. Now, whether that means doing the dishes, fixing a leaky tap, fixing a broken handle on one of the cupboards, whatever it is, you'd be amazed sometimes how attractive that is in the moment. Oh, I'll just get on with that. Two hours later, you, you know, you've wasted that kind of time and you didn't really need to do it during the working day but it can be very seductive. So just ignore it, get back to work, keep to your routine and, and be disciplined enough to keep to that system that you've, uh, you've put for yourself. Number 16, be sure to socialize after work. And I really do believe this works. You know, after work, you know, four, five, six o'clock, whatever time that is, give somebody a call at work or otherwise and just have a chat have a coffee have a drink maybe something stronger if it's later in the afternoon or evening that's up to you but i find that really works and i've uh, witnessed and been told and heard of uh, lots of organizations doing many many things for example croissants and coffee on a wednesday morning so it's kind of like a brunch croissants and coffee on a wednesday morning which works they get the whole team together and just chat about various things i've also heard of prosecco fridays where you know the organization will pay for you to have a bottle of uh, prosecco maybe not every week but every fortnight or month just to keep those energy levels and that engagement with your colleagues and employees high and that happens with this particular example is four o'clock in the afternoon they normally finish at 5 30 so they've decided they're gonna have an earlier finish on a Friday plus Prosecco and a few snacks and a chat. And then they escalated that in the sense that they now have puzzle, puzzles, quizzes, and fun and games, you know, icebreakers, all that kind of stuff in the same session. And it really does end on a high for the week, ready for a great weekend. Number, that was number 16. Number 17, and finally, as I said, at lunchtime, have a walk and get that exercise going definitely try to exercise. You'd be amazed how much longer you might just sit at a laptop or a computer thinking, I've got to get this done, need to do that. Is this deadline, is that deadline? And all of that applies, of course, but if you get a tiny bit of exercise during lunchtime, a short walk and something after work, again, another short walk, some kind of training in your house on a yoga mat or on the carpet there's lots and lots of videos on youtube about how you can work out at home it doesn't need to be long 10 or 15 minutes something like that if you're into working out then of course it can be longer and you can do something more vigorous like a hit training you know high intensity training but a healthy body is a healthy mind we all know that but the vast majority of us if we are very very busy we tend to miss the exercise part but being healthy also helps you be more alert and mental dexterity is much better and you're able to be more creative and solve problems quickly and simply just get on with your work in a more effective manner. So I hope that's helped. Coming back to the main screen. So those were just very quick 17 tips in terms of how to be more effective at home. My biggest tip is just to have a structure. Have a strict structure and a system through the day have a start and finish time, just like you would in a normal office. Nine to five is the cliche time. Whatever that is for you, stick to it. Have short, very short, regular breaks. Have an extended lunch and try and get some exercise in. So I hope that's helped. If you think it has and you have tips yourself of something that you do that works for you, please share it because uh, that's not a comprehensive list. It's ones that work for me and I know other people do other stuff. So by all means, share in the in the comment box below what you think will work what you've done and tried and works for you or you've heard of other people i'd be delighted to have some feedback so take care be safe and i look forward to speaking to you next time bye for now